Hi, and happy voting day. Is that what it's called? Election day. I took my children to vote this morning because I just want them to understand the importance of voting. And we had the opportunity of voting for t um, one spot on, I think, the school board where there were only two candidates and I had to vote for two people. And then a uh, choice of voting for three men on like the public works board. And I didn't know a heck of a lot about any of them, but I was just trying to make a point with the twins. So there we have this extra little discussion about Kristen Gillibrand. And my point in creating the Gillibrand it, um, fake intersectionality was not to make you nihilistic about the legislative process, but rather to make you think critically about even politicians who claim to advocate for women's rights. So I can't even find that discussion at the moment. But just let me say, many of you have expressed concerns about things like mass incarceration. Okay, here's our very annoying um, fake intersectionality with Christian Gillibrand saying something nonsensical about intersectionality. But as I was saying, um, when we vote, in local elections, we are really making some of the most important choices. Thinking about who's on the school board is important. We don't want a school to prison pipeline. Thinking about who the district attorney is and whether that person is going to lock everybody away for a small drug charge. They just commuted over 400 sentences for people in Arizona today. <clears throat> and not Arizona, I'm sorry, Oklahoma. They commuted over 400 sentences of people who had petty drug possession or property charges and they changed their convictions from felonies because of the war on drugs to misdemeanors. So 400 people walked out of prison today and uh, many of them were people of color, women of color, and many of them had meth. You know, if someone has meth, is throwing them in prison really going to solve the problem? Not so sure. Certainly, I don't think that Kristen Gillibrand has the answer for it, but I just wanted to quickly say it's election day. Think about who's representing you and how those people have the power to incarcerate us, to make laws that control our bodies and our families, to educate or miseducate our children, and try to take at least the local election seriously because it does impact our lives. Okay, that was my preaching for today. Now here's our intersectionality discussion board and there is now a new discussion board that I just made to help you with the paper and the purpose today is for the most part to help me um, to help you succeed on the paper. For the paper, the second paper, which is due on the 22nd of this month, you are looking for a cultural object. That can be a song, a video, an advertisement, an image, anything that pops up on your computer or your television or even in a print magazine. Usually, when if I was teaching face-to-face, -face, I would bring print magazines and I would ask people to take an image from the print magazine because there are websites like this one that's quite interesting that critiques or offers commentary on advertisements from a feminist perspective. So this particular advertisement, um, it's funny that there's this weird Michael Kors wonderlust advertisement with a naked woman holding a giant perfume bottle over her bosom, which I don't even want to analyze because I have no idea why that's an appealing image. Then there is this um, Halloween commercial about kids who cross dress for Halloween. And I believe the article is about like, well, you know, we're going to be pro transgender. Okay, how about pro working mom? Here's the poor mom schlepping the crap. And this is just me making a little rant. But even if you do find something on a feminist website and they overlook an aspect of the critique, then you can say, hey, I found this on a website and it critiqued this, but it didn't critique this. Otherwise, try to find things that you really do see or hear in everyday life. There are sample papers, and let me remind you quickly how to do this discussion, this bonus discussion, properly. You want to have an embedded image. 
So obviously Kelly knows how to do this. And Dolce & Gabbana always has problematic ads. <clears throat> and, okay, I don't even know what's happening there. <laughs> um, you go and you create your thread. You, for your title, you can put your name. And then to embed the image, you click on this little happy picture and you look in your computer for an image. And let me find a fun image. I have no idea what that is. I take screenshots of really weird things. Let's see. The computer also asks you for accessibility purposes to describe the image and give it a title because then someone who's using a screen reader who's visually impaired, impaired will know how to um, look at your image. So pretend that you put that in there. I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's probably me fighting with starfish. If you're actually going to type descriptions and stuff there, then you submit it and you'll have an embedded image that people can see right in your post and that makes the posts more user friendly. There are two other places to look for information on the paper. One place to look is in papers and this is our simplest sidebar. If you click on the paper assignment, then you can click on some extensive directions and it, it suggest ways that you can do the paper and options and varieties. You want to describe three terms to talk about and analyze your cultural object. So here is an example of a discussion of just one term. It takes about a hundred words just to describe one term. Then you want to describe your image, you want to describe its significance, etc. So most of these papers are going to be about 800 to a thousand words, but I am not um, a bean counter. You know, I don't look at how long the paper is. I read the paper and I see what I learn from it because some people can write really efficiently and really to the point. There's also a rubric. And if you meet the qualifications on the rubric, then you will, now when it says examples, remember you're supposed to have three examples from the terms and the connection between the terms. This is where our um, appropriately documented definitions of terms from essays, this is where you earn most of the points for your paper. So another resource for writing the papers is in our labor and representation sidebar. If you look at the lesson, which is on second paper, it has another copy of the directions. And it also has some sample papers of various lengths. So this one, for example, is probably the shortest, but she's a single, single mom. So we tend to be short and to the point. In the interest of being short and to the point, I am going to stop rambling on for now. If you have any other questions about the paper or any other assignments, hopefully you've noticed that there are somewhat fewer quizzes and a little bit lighter workload in the second half of the semester here. And I hope that you are enjoying that and getting caught up if you need to. Have a great day.